The indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of. From getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Indie authors now wear more hats than ever as we strive to create a career full of meaning, prosperity, and potential. We've juggled the demands and continue to be rebels in the face of adversity. Now, after years of hearing the shouts of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place are the seeds of a better way to rapid release. A way that feels incredible as we build a sustainable, lifelong author career that not only increases our visibility and royalties, but it's all done with intention and ease. If you're ready to buck the system and become the visionary authorpreneur I know you're meant to be, you've come to the right place. I'm Carissa Andrews, international best-selling indie author, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Welcome to the Author Revolution Podcast, my friend. I am so glad that you're here today. Oh, we have a great podcast episode for you today lined up. I am interviewing Emma Desi. Now, Emma is a friend of mine, and we met each other a couple of years ago, actually, when she was hosting an online summit for indie authors, helping them try to learn about different aspects of the indie publishing world. And so obviously, I was there to teach a little bit about rapid releasing. And since then, Emma and I have just found that we've been on the same wavelength a lot. And because of that, I asked her to join us on the Author Revolution podcast. She is one of those women who is just not only an incredible creative herself, but she is such a big hearted entrepreneur wanting to help other indie authors, especially new authors, learn the ropes of indie publishing. She actually has a mission right now that she wants to help a thousand indie authors publish their first book. Talk about a cool mission, right? So not only is she doing that, but she's got a group coaching program that's brand new that she's getting started and she's really excited to talk about. And so I wanted to invite her onto the podcast to talk more about what it is she does, how she operates, why this group coaching thing, and a little bit more about like where she headed and what's happening. So I cannot wait for you to listen to this podcast episode. So let's get right to it. Well, welcome, Emma. I'm so glad that you're here for the Author Revolution podcast today. It's been like a long time coming. You should have been here so much longer. (laughs) Yeah, what's going on, Carissa? What's going on? (laughs) Well, I did tell my audience in the introduction a little bit about how we met and how um, I was actually a part of one of your summits. And that's kind of like where it all began. But for my audience who's listening now, could you tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course. Yes. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so I'm I am Emma. I'm um, a fiction writer. I write predominantly women's fiction, contemporary women's fiction, but I also um, coach new writers as well. And I focus very much on those people who are writing their first novel and are just needing help getting started. And uh, even just doing that first draft, which can elude so many people. Yes. So that's the kind of primary way that I help writers. Um, I have um, a website where you can go and check out a little bit about me. But more importantly, I have a podcast called Turning Readers into Writers. And that is full of wonderful interviews with people like yourself, actually, not long ago. Um, um, Coming in and talking about um, the ways in which they've learned to write their books and what works for them. But one of the things I do enjoy doing is talking to debut authors and people who have just published their first, because that's who my audience is. And it's talking to them about, okay, how do you find the confidence to do this? How do you find the time to do this? And I'm a big believer that if they, if people can kind of see someone else in their position has, has done this, then they know that they can do it too. So those are the ways that I help writers, but it's been a long journey. I think like a lot of people, it can take bit of time to get to where you want to be I didn't write my first book until I was 40 so it, a lot of you know stop start stop start along the way and I just got to a point where I hit a brick wall and I thought right either you do this or you you move on and you know just forget about it because you've never done it are you going to do it yeah so I, I said okay let's do it let's do the first draft and if I enjoyed the experience 
then I'll go on and do the revisions. If it was horrible, painful, just I never want to go through that again, then I know and I can put fret. it to one side and not fret about it. But as it happened, it, I loved it. It was challenging, don't get me wrong. It took me a long time, but I loved it. And what I loved about it and why I do what I do now is I, I realized if I could write a book, something I dreamt of for so long, then it was like, well, well what else can I do? And I do say that writing that first draft changed my life, which feels a bit dramatic. And it's not that it changed in that moment. But when I look back now over those years, I can see the incremental changes that came about as a result of that. Absolutely. And my self-belief and my outline. My outline. So, um, yeah, so that's how I got to where I am. <laughs> that's amazing. So did you always know you wanted to be a writer then? Is that something that was always in the back burner? Well, do you know, I think it was because I remember being about seven, eight, nine and um, had just discovered fiction and the magic of fiction. And then I wanted to, to be a writer at that age. And like we all, many of us did, you know, the children's stories with illustrations and sellotapes together and all yes. the rest of it. But then life happened and I put that to the back burner. I remember somebody saying, what did you want to do at the age of eight? Because whatever that is, that's your true calling. And so maybe it has always been there. <laughs> Ah, that's interesting. That's mm. absolutely cool. So at what point did you go, okay, I really want to write this story that like, did you have the story idea first or did you decide to try to write a book first? I had the idea first. So my first book, the sort of theme of uh, around it is around postnatal depression, postpartum depression, which I had went through for a number of years. And at the time, I was journaling about it as you know, a way of kind of trying to manage it and understand what was going on, because I didn't know it was that at the time. And then later, it just kind of evolved into, I thought, this might make a good story. And so I pursued it and turned it into fiction and kind of just saw where it led me, because I'm very much a pantser rather than a plotter. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, let's just see where this goes and um, if it has any legs. And it did seem to grow and the characters then came into their own and they flourished and the story evolved. Now, I love pantsing. It's my favorite way of doing it because I, I love the aha moment that comes when somebody says something unexpected or even a character appears that you didn't know was going to come. I love that freedom. But then the downside is the back end when you have to go back and shape it and turn it into something actually yes. readable. <laughs> um, so then it took me a long time to kind of form that into into a story with a real beginning middle and end um but definitely yeah the I suppose the character originally was me and then evolved and then the story came later and then it became what it is now that's amazing so how many books do you have out now I have three published now and the, I'm working on my fourth but I've been working on it for about two years now and it's a change of genre for me. So there's a lot of new learning going on there. And um, it's uh, it's my first attempt at suspense. So lots of new kind of expectations going on and um, of structuring it and and learning what's enough kind of suspense and what's too much or what's too little. So I'm learning all of that sure. working with my coach to find that. But it's good. I'm really, really enjoying it. Can I tell you how it came about? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I would <laughs> love to know. <laughs> I am. Um, I interviewed somebody who is a, a medium or a, a, yeah, she would, I think she would describe herself as a media a channeler. That's the word she uses. Okay. She's a channeler. And she, um, we, I interviewed her about how she uses channeling to help writers write their books. And she puts them into a meditative state and unleashes the subconscious. And, you know, with the belief that if you've got this idea it already exists, you just need to bring it into you and manifest it and make it happen. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is brilliant. That's if I can just speak this book, oh, it's going to save me so much shoulder cramp. It's going to <laughs> speed up the whole process. It's going to be marvelous. I love it. <laughs> I worked with this lady for three months, and this is the book that came out. Oh, and wow. that's why it's such a departure for me from women's fiction to the suspense side of it. It has not been, as these things never are, it has not been as simple. <laughs> Right, right. Going into meditation and the book comes out perfect. There's a lot of work that's had to go into it subsequently. But I'm really glad I, I went through the experience. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that is so cool. I, I would never have thought 
to, to go to a channeler like that. I, I didn't even know something like that existed, to be honest. I mean, I probably should have being the type of information I like to consume, but I, I had never even like considered that. That's so cool. So how did you find no. this particular person? I think she was um, word of mouth. Somebody recommended that she might be an interesting person to talk to uh, for this live workshop thing that I was doing. And uh, they were right. It was, it was fascinating. It opened up a whole new thing for me. I, cause I think we, we can be more familiar with the idea of, um, or what do they call it when you have a meditation and then you come out of it and then you write. Mm, yeah. Physically write. Yep. I can't remember what that's called, but the idea of actually speaking it was a new one for me. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> that is really cool. I know that that's kind of like Abraham Hicks kind of goes into those types of channeling too, where it's called a rampage of whatever, whatever it is, but for a different reason. And so mm-hmm. not necessarily to, to bring out a story, although I could see how that could work. That's yeah. Really interesting. I- yeah and I love it because I, I don't think I would have come up with the story idea if I'd been sitting consciously thinking about it and I, I love the the story idea I love it <laughs> that is so cool I can't wait to see are you using the same pen name or are you going to try a different pen name because it's a genre departure I'm thinking I'm going to try a different one yeah mm-hmm. and actually you're an indie author I should probably be asking your advice on this <laughs> one of the reasons too that I was thinking of changing is because my surname is not the easiest to remember okay I thinking, oh, maybe I should go with my married name which is much simpler <laughs> okay but I don't know we shall see yeah that's a possibility although I have in, in my experience what's been interesting is that when your name is different or it's uh harder to remember people actually in, in some weird way remember it better like they know it's mm-hmm. weird they know it's different and they're like they can't remember her last name but it's different I, I think I can find it you know kind of thing Or if it's like Andrews, it's like, there's a bazillion Andrewses, you know what I mean? And so it's hard. It's like, it's easy to get lost in the shuffle of that as well. So it's kind of, Mm. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you're probably right. Changing genre. Maybe it is a good idea to have a different pen name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you want to be able to kind of compare the, the different um, pen names and the, the genres, which one is working better for you, which ones, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's great. but yeah, so exciting times and fingers crossed that will be out by the end of the year. I was just <laughs> going to ask that. I'm like, so when is it going to be done? <laughs> What's been your biggest challenge so far in any of the, the writings? The biggest challenge, I think, to be honest, the biggest challenge was just getting started with that first one. Okay. Because in those beginning days, there's not the self-belief that I have now that I can do this. I didn't have the evidence that it was possible. And so kind of, so for example, my mom is a writer and I'd say a much better writer than me, but she never finished anything. Ah, okay. So there's a, I think there was a little bit of me there kind of going, oh, well, mom didn't do it. So I don't have to either. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so kind of battling that and sort of saying, no, I, I do want to be a finisher. I, I really want to see if I've got what it takes to do this. Um, so I think just that first book, getting started and making that commitment to myself that I was at least worth having, a, it was worth me having a go at doing this and uh, just at least doing the first draft. And there on in, it, it, I don't want to say it's gotten easier, um, but in terms of motivation and self-belief that's certainly gotten easier because now I can say, well, look, Emma, you've done this, you've written a number of Uh, half manuscripts that got nowhere you've written a number of full manuscripts that you've published and people are enjoying so now I know it's possible for me to do it even when it's hard absolutely and I think that never gets easier either I mean every single time I start a brand new book or a brand new project I'm like can I actually do this thing I I think every (laughs) single one of us do it where it's like what if it doesn't come out the way I wanted to what if it doesn't like I I put it up for pre-order oh my gosh what (laughs) you know (laughs) <laughs> what if it doesn't happen? And it always does. But you, you always, I, I don't know that that goes away. It's so weird. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know why we do that. No, and you're, you're taking it that extra step. I think you're very brave when you put things out on pre-order. But maybe, you know, that's you putting it out to the universe and saying, hey, I'm doing it. It's happening. It's already yep. done. Yeah, it's it already happens. done. I've decided. So now I just need to like get into the vibe and know that it's coming. <laughs> it is here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe that's why that I need to do the next one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, as a Virgo, I have to say that's very scary too. I mean, especially in the beginning when pre-orders were, I think, first established for indie authors, that was scary because we only had three months and now it's like, whatever, I'll put it out, you know, two months in advance. It's not a big deal, but it, it was scary to, to take that leap before you figured for sure it would be ready, but it, it was also really liberating too, because it does, it, it triggers that decision inspired action motion to get it all taken care of. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that, maybe that had happened to me at that beginning when I made that decision, maybe there was, now I had this concrete character that I felt I could really, there was something tangible there to work with and I could envisage the end. Yep. And, and so then I put it out and made it brought in the right vibrations and made it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you did for sure. <laughs> I think it's so cool the way that we, our minds will do that too. As soon as we've, once we've locked into that decision that it's happening, it's like the whole universe will align for us to make it happen. And, yes. and that belief just backs it up. It's holding that vibration and knowing that we're, we're capable of doing it. And it's, it's already here. It's manifesting. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause when you think about other things, you know, outside of writing other things that we make a decision about, I'm going to move house. Once you make the decision, it happens. Yep. I'm going to have a family. You make the decision, it happens. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go for a new job. Yeah, a car. And so if we can make that decision about our books, writing that first book, it can happen. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And if we do make the decision that marketing is going to be easy, it will be easy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. In theory. In theory. Put it out there. <laughs> I keep telling myself and every day it gets a little easier because then I hand things over to my PA and go, you do it. (laughs) She was on me yesterday about doing more TikToks more frequently. And I'm like, but I have so many other things. I'm like, if only I had knew a PA that loved to do TikToks and could do it for me. She goes, ah, that would be amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh goodness. It's just funny. Okay. So like you were talking about in the beginning, um, you've transitioned into being an indie author coach. So when did you know in your author journey that you would like to help first-time authors publish their books? It was at that, let's think, it wasn't, it was, I'd say it was a year or two after I published my first book. And so maybe even when the second book was out and I was kind of able to reflect then on just how much my life had changed in so many ways outside of writing as well. And it, I found it transformative. I really, really did in terms of my own self-belief, what I could do, how I viewed myself. I could now proudly say I am a writer as well. But then it was also, it gave me that confidence to start another business, not the coaching, but a different business as well. Something I would never have dreamed of doing before. Wow. And I, at the time, I was very much focused on women of kind of around middle age, around the, the age that I was. Women who have you know, worked very hard, have given up a lot for family, say, been juggling everything, family and work, um, and had never really felt able that they could have a writing career as well, or at least write for themselves. Um, And so I wanted them to see that it's absolutely possible, especially, you know, if your kids are a little bit older now and less dependent, um, if you're in a good place with your work, that it was never too late. You could always do this. Is, this is a dream worth pursuing. And if you pursue it, you also have the opportunity then to have what happened to me, which was this big transformation in the wider ripples of your life. Right. Um, and, and see how, and also the idea of being an example to my kids as well, which I know can sound a little bit cliched now, but honestly, my middle girl, when I see her sitting down with her book, her notebooks and writing um, and saying that she's going to be a writer and she's got all these titles for her books laid out, I'm showing her that this is very possible. Even if she doesn't pursue writing, she's seeing that she can pursue her dreams. Well, and it's um, not cliche because you you had that example yourself where it, it kind of held you back for a little bit because your example wasn't strong I mean, it was strong mm-hmm. in, in some ways, like the writing aspect was strong, but the, the finishing part was lacking. And so you're, yeah. you're kind of completing that whole cycle so that the next generation then doesn't have to worry as much or have to go through that limiting belief so much. That's, yeah, that's cool. So. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's so true. Just kind of seeing me finish a project and, and seeing it out there on the world, uh, in the world. Although <laughs> I am. Um, I only do ebooks. I don't do uh, paperback. And so she did ask me, when are you going to write a real book? (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, you could always transform your eBooks into real books. It, you have the content. It's literally just a cover. That's all you need. <laughs> so if you need some help, Emma, I can help you with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You can make magic happen. It's all good. Just going to say that that's where it came from. It's just, I, it changed me so much. It gave me so much confidence. And I really, really wanted this for other women who have put everybody else before them. And now is their time. Now is their opportunity. And it's, it, I do see it in a lot of people who, um, they don't believe they're worth it. They don't think that they should be doing it. You know, that question of who am I? Who am I to think that I can do this? And the feeling around, am I selfish to be doing this and taking time away from the other people in my life? And so a lot of what I do is try and reframe that for people to kind of say, no, you're being an example. You're being healthy for your own sanity. And yeah. that's always a good thing. And that filters out to the rest of your friends and family, too. So um, absolutely. that's yeah, that's the driver behind me. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, though, because when we when we have these creative impulses, I, I really think that's the universe or our subconscious or however you want to describe it, warning us of what we need to be ready for because it needs to come through us. You know what I mean? So rather than holding ourselves back or feeling like it's selfish, knowing that that's a part of us that is being triggered to, to warn us that we need to be ready, that it's, it's on its way. It's already here. We're meant to be doing this thing. I think that's such a better way to frame it than worry about self-worth. And I think you're so, you're so spot on about especially women. I mean, I'm sure there's guys out there too, but they, they do feel that selfishness of like, okay, I'm reading this book when my kids over here, like for the 900th time wanting juice. And <laughs> eventually you're like, get a, get a sibling to get the juice. Okay. <laughs> you know, we have, we carry that guilt with us. And it's, it's so weird because, you know, there are other people in this house who are all doing their own things and it's okay to, to be a little bit selfish if that's what you want to call it. But honestly, it's more about feeling your own needs and filling your cup so that you can then spill it over I think yes okay. that's such a nice way of putting it yeah just being happy finding a way of having contentment in our ever busy lives absolutely um, so I want to talk about your turning writers into readers podcast you've got more than a hundred episodes I mean it's amazing woman so what inspired you to to start the podcast versus say a blog you know because everyone was doing a blog and it was like that was the big thing to do for a long time why a podcast so I did start off doing a blog um, and then, uh, but I love podcasts. I discovered them and was consuming them as much as I possibly could. And I got a lot of my learning through podcasts as well. A mixture of solo episodes from people, you know, actually teaching. And yeah. then also um, interviews like this one where you get to kind of have a discussion around a topic and and really delve into somebody else's experiences. Yeah. I loved those. I really, really enjoyed listening to podcasts and what they could offer. And I could do it on the move. And um, it was an easier way to consume. I'm probably being very lazy here, but it was an easier way to consume <laughs> knowledge than having to sit down and actually open up something and read it. Yeah. And I'm a very slow reader. So that <laughs> was sure. it. Sure. So, um, so then I made that switch. I found Crystal Prophet, this wonderful woman, Crystal Prophet. Uh, we were in the same training course together and I saw what she was doing and I thought, oh my gosh, this has come to me at just the right time. This is what I've been thinking about. And she's showing me how to do it in a really fun, step-by-step, -step, simple way. Um, and so she got me inspired and then the podcast was born and I loved it. I just really, really enjoyed it. So the first few episodes were solo ones while I got to grips with all the technology and how it all works and finding the music and all that kind of good fun stuff absolutely um, but I realized too that I, I did prefer the interview style I found them more fun to do as well and I meant I get to learn at the same time so a little bit of selfishness in there <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing not a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> but so when I'm talking to somebody, even a debut writer who's just written their first book, there's always something to learn from everybody else's experiences or process, um, the way they approach their work. Um, even if it's to kind of learn, that's not the way I want to do it, as well as, OK, yeah, that's something I could aspire to. And so the interviews became more and more frequent. And now that's what I do all the time now is I do interviews and I love them. I really, really do. And as I'm getting more experienced, 
then I'm still interviewing those debut writers, but I've also been lucky enough to interview people like yourself who are much further down the author journey and have uh, even more to share with the likes of myself and my listeners. So it's really good fun. It's so great. And it was, I remember when I first uh, started listening to your podcast and I loved, I loved that variety about it because of the fact that you were doing, you know, the, the solos, but you had that intermix of the brand new authors with the more experienced authors, because it, it does give such a, I don't know, a spectrum of experience levels that I haven't seen on a lot of, uh, a lot of podcasts for writers. It's really cool. Yeah, it is nice. And it keeps me on my toes as well. And, um, and funnily enough, kind of talking, sometimes talking to authors who are a little bit, you know, where I was a few years ago, it's also nice to reflect, gosh, I've come a few steps as well. And I've learned some things along the way that feels really good. And so again, it's that nice boost to self-esteem and self-belief to keep me going, keep me yeah. writing when I'm hitting a brick wall and I'm finding it difficult. Yeah. And you're sitting here going, oh, wait a minute. I am mid manifestation, aren't I? I'm in the <laughs> middle, the messy middle of my author career. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I totally get it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. Fun. Now you have a great Facebook group as well. One that is just, you do so many great Facebook lives and things that are going on in your Facebook group. Do you want to tell my audience a little bit about that as well? Yes, I'd love to. So yeah, we've got, I've got a really nice group of uh, actually a mix of writers, some people who haven't written anything and others who have written a series, but um, kind of enjoy being part of a mixed, a mixed bag of writers. And so I'm in there most days, either posting or responding to posts. I quite often go in and do a Facebook Live, either um, just with a little tidbit that I've noticed in the course of my day and can see how it's relevant to our writing. And a lot of what I talk about is that, oh, what's another word for mindset? But the mindset stage of it and how we constantly need that encouragement and um, reinforcement that we're doing a good thing and it's okay if it's tough it's meant to be it's a challenge that's part of the fun of it so Facebook lives about that and then also um, I often have um, free events going on whether it be a summit like you were part of or yeah. workshops going on um, sometimes just a simple Q&A session so you can come in and uh, ask me anything and uh, I'll do my best to answer um, so yeah, so it's a really nice um, safe space to be and some people share their work as well, which is lovely and encourages others. People also share when they've got a new publication out, which is really nice and keeps everybody galvanized. I love being part of it. It's really, really nice. It's great when you have such an engaged community and people are, are excited to, to be a part of it and to share their, their process and to hear. I mean, you, you have, you've cultivated this great group of people who are willing to not only share, but to interact and to just like go through the process and try to understand how it's all working for everyone else. And I think that's really, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. It is lovely when you do see somebody put up a question and then other members come in and um, offer their solution or their suggestion about how they would go through it. Um, And so it's really um, kind of like a grassroots organization, if you like, you know, it's coming up from everybody who's involved not just for me, you know, being the high and mighty, but really from every, we're, we're a community rather than a, uh, it's not a school, it's a community. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so you, obviously you're doing so many different things and you were talking about the summits, and you were talking about your free workshops, but now you've got this new coaching opportunity that's opening up. I think you said in May and ending in June. So do you want to tell my audience a little bit about that? Yes, well, I'm opening the doors in May, May through June. It's um, I'm opening, I'm doing my first group program, which I'm super, super excited about. So up until now, I've been doing just one-to-one coaching, focusing very much on one person at a time. But I have a vision for the future. And my vision is to help 1,000 authors write their first book. And I realized if I continue doing one-to-one, it's going to take me a long, long time. Yes. (laughs) It's like writing a book one at a time. Yep, I get it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I've um, created this group space and we'll have a maximum of 10 people in each cohort and um, I've put together a framework for people which we'll work through month by month and uh, the framework I'm very excited about I've kind of based it on sort of architecture if you like and so the ground plan for our story is the story behind the story So what is going on in your character's life or even in the world before the story starts? So that we're best place for where to start the story. 
Right. Um, and then we've got our foundations, which for me are as character. It's all about character for me. We've got to know who the story is about, why they're here, why this is important to them, what's the relevance to this person involved in the story. We then have the elevation of the building, which is the structure. Um, you know, then we need to know how to place everything and make this go smoothly so that your reader wants to stay reading and is excited to know what happens at the end. And then we have, uh, we look at what I call the interior design, which is more the kind of the craft elements, you know, dialogue, pacing, show, don't tell, that big scary t- phrase um, <laughs> that we can do in revision. You know, those things, once we've got the basics there, we can go in and do these things in revision. And then finally, we've got the roof, which kind of overhangs everything. And that's the alignment piece, being aligned, you yourself being aligned with you as an author. Uh, being a business owner, being a creative, being possibly somebody that earns some money from their their books. Yeah, as possibly somebody who gets rejected from agent after agent after agent, but still is aligned to themselves as a writer and will carry on uh, Mm -hmm. regardless until they get what they want. And for me, and I, I'm guessing for you as well, Chris, this hangs above everything we do. We can, uh, we're never going to get that book written unless we have a level of self-belief. A yes. level of ego in the best sense of the word. We need that to write the book and then talk about the book as well. Yeah. And yeah. Share it with people. Bring it into so, manifestation through words. Yep. Yes. Yes. So th- that's the kind of framework that I'm teaching. Okay. And it's over 12 months. And um, I'm really excited because it's not just about me. I obviously coach and I obviously teach in it, but we also have. Um, uh sprinting uh what do we call them uh, i'm trying to come up with a different word sprint i haven't come up with it just yet but uh writing sprints and okay. there's up to 10 a week so people can come into a zoom space there's no um prerequisite to write a certain number of words or anything there's no pressure that way but it is a space to come in and be with other writers who are writing and what i love about these and why i think they're so so valuable is that you can enter the zoom room when you're feeling a bit tired and not really inspired but once you get there and you're with others it's amazing how your own energy shifts and suddenly you can become so so productive and get more done and then at the end of the time feel yay I did something that I didn't think I'd do it must be that that combined um mental energy where it's like it all comes together into that focal point area and so the zoom zoom meeting is like the focal point but everyone's there to do the same type of thing and so it just elevates those who aren't quite feeling the vibe yet to to get up into the the level of uh, accomplishing it that's awesome yeah yeah I, it's bizarre isn't it even in a zoom room it's still so powerful still yeah. so strong and i think also what those they can do is give that um a level of uh sort of a f- being a little bit official so you can say to the other people in your family oh i've got a meeting now with my writers uh, you know it gives you that um you can justify to those in your family who perhaps don't quite get it yeah there are people waiting for you and you have an obligation to turn up so yeah. it can uh, can be good for accountability absolutely so, my accountability yeah. group is waiting for me I must go right didn't do my sprint now <laughs> be, yes. be good I'll see you later <laughs> I'll leave, exactly call me if you're on fire okay <laughs> Oh yes, I have a little. I, I work in a big cupboard, and the amount of times I hold onto the cupboard door as the kids are trying to get in. The amount of times I've had to lock the door. There were so many years where I was literally out in the open. I didn't have an office with a door, and it was like, oh, oh my goodness. So I feel you. I definitely feel you there. Oh, funny. Um, and then the so final nervous. piece that I'm excited about too is. Um, I have an editor coming in as well, and she's going to be coming in each month to talk about different aspects of the editing process, as opposed nice. which is very different to the coaching process. But because um, I know that that's something that people think about and can't help but jump towards as they're writing right. um, and then self-editing. So it's it's the full package. I'm really really excited about it. It's a really so robust cool. program for writers. Awesome. So where if anyone listening right now wants to learn more about the program or how to get involved where do they go they can go to my website emmadesi.com um there's lots of information there and you'll also be able to get on my newsletter there which means you'll be the first to hear about any of these opportunities coming up if it sounds exciting to you and you would like to chat to me about it there is an application process 
then you can go to emmadesi.com forward slash application. <laughs> nice and simple. And then we'll get to have a chat and see if it's the right fit. And um, if it is, then we get to work together and make magic happen. That's fantastic. And I'll also make sure that the links are available in the show notes too. So if they want to just click and just go without having to figure out how to spell anything, we'll make sure that they're available for them there as well. Oh my goodness. I think that's just, it's such a cool group program. And I think so many new authors are going to benefit. I mean, obviously you have 10 this time around, but they're going to benefit so greatly from it and the experience of it, where again, you're building that community that almost like a tight knit community of 10 to to grow and bond together so that then the the next round comes in. That's just, it's such a cool way to do it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I, I'm a member. I, you know, I've worked one-on-one with people and I do also partake in group programs as well. And I do love one-to-one. I get a lot from that, but there's something about being in a smaller group where you get to know everybody, you get to learn from them too. And the number of times I've turned up to a group coaching session, not really had any questions or not known what I wanted to know that day and somebody else will ask the question that I was meant to hear and get the response to and so even if I turn up just as myself I'll get something from it it's the power of them are great it is it's amazing I even with um like the challenge that I just ran we had a a one one call one live zoom call at the end of it and it was like the the energy from the the people there and learn hearing about their experiences over the course of the week or their manifestations with their their writing or other weird things that came up. I mean, we had one lady that <laughs> she her husband had like the surprise cataract surgery thing come up that he needed to have, and it wasn't covered by their insurance. It was like twelve hundred dollars, and she, like she didn't know how she was going to cover that during this the course of our millionaire challenge. And then she like through her manifestations and everything she was doing. I mean. It was in process, sort of. It had to have been, uh-huh. but she she had been uh, let go from a job three years prior. Three years prior, oh, wow. and that week that the, that sh- they found out about this cataract surgery, she got a check for the exact amount, the twelve hundred dollars, to cover it, and it was like the, the payout from her um, health insurance, like savings plan or whatever. And it was like, oh. how? And she she's like, I don't even remember doing it. I, I had no <laughs> idea. It's just like, it just gives me goosebumps. I'm like, it's so cool. And those are the experience. I mean, even when it's just a small group experience where you're doing this enormous, elaborate, incredible community. I mean, what an experience that's going to be epic. Yeah, it is. It's going to be so much fun. I'm, I just, I'm, yeah, I'm very, very excited about it. And I know that we'll all, all learn together. And that's that, that joy of seeing new writers evolve, develop their skills, develop their confidence. And, um, when I see the light in people's eyes, when they, they have that moment, it's, it's priceless. I agree. I love it so much. That is, it's so wonderful to see them when they finally, especially if it's something that's been bugging them a while and they can't, Mm -hmm. haven't quite figured out, like they know they're missing something, but they're not sure what it is. And then it clicks. That's so cool. And then there's that domino effect. So many other things then fall into place and make sense. Yeah. I love it. (laughs) Okay. Well, where can my audience go? It, like, I'm assuming it's your website. If they want to learn more about your books and your, your course and coaching programs, like how, where do they, what's the best place for them to, to go searching you up? Best place is my website, emmadesi.com. But to be honest, if you put my name into Google, it's pretty much just me up there. Um, but also my Facebook group is a great place to come as well. So uh, Facebook turning readers into writers and, uh, and you'll find me and uh, come and say hi. Absolutely. And again, we'll make sure those links are there too, so that people can locate them as well. It's so wonderful. Well, thank you, Emma, for being on the podcast today. I I so appreciate you being here and telling us about your journey as a writer and and then how it's transitioned into everything that you're doing. I think you, you do such an amazing job with everything and the people who are in your circle and who gravitate to you are just, they're the sweetest people. They really, really are. So yeah. Anybody in, who's listening to this podcast, if you want like just an amazing group of people to be your cheerleaders or to be there as an example, definitely check out Emma's uh, everything. <laughs> Emma's everything. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carissa. I love being here. I always love chatting with you, as you know. Thank you. See, I told you Emma was awesome. I don't know what it is about her energy. Just I love being around her and talking with her about all the different aspects of indie publishing and manifestation, law of attraction. She's just one of those really cool people that you just can't help but love, you know? 
So if you are looking for more information on Emma's books or her group coaching program or any of the things like her podcast, just head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 133 and all of the details will be there. And in addition, if you like to download the transcripts, as always, it will be there as well. So authorrevolution.org forward slash 133 and you can download the transcript at the bottom of the page. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but I am just loving where this year has taken us. There are so many cool, unique, awesome, and incredible entrepreneurs who are out there, incredible writers who are here to share their journeys and their insights into how things have been working for them. And I hope that every single podcast episode is helping you to sift through the information and make things just a little bit clearer on how you want your writing journey to go, how you want to call in that millionaire author destiny, so to speak. So I hope you've enjoyed this podcast episode as much as I did interviewing Emma because she's amazing. <laughs> and in the meantime, I hope you go forth and start your author revolution.